I'm Jimmy LaFleur. I'm the Public Art Manager with the City of San Antonio in the Department of Arts and Culture. I'm not a real loud talker, so let me know if I'm, if I'm getting quiet after. Um, we're doing Que Pasa Pasa to help plan projects, and we're really excited to come out to the neighborhoods and be able to talk about our process and to introduce ourselves to you. So I appreciate you coming out. You can come to this as well as the next two uh, workshops. They're very similar, except we'll be talking about a little bit different regions at each meeting. Uh, I'm going to start by turning it over and introducing um, our director of the Art Department of Arts and Culture, Debbie Rockasitter, and I will be right back. Good evening, everybody. How are you guys tonight? It's a little hot. I see some, uh, some people that I'm familiar with, so welcome. And um, some that I'm not, so welcome. I'm Debbie Rockasitter. I'm the director of the Department of Arts and Culture for the city of San Antonio. And I'm very happy that you guys came out tonight to talk about public art in, uh, in this area. Uh, this is the public art meeting that we're going to talk about for City Council Districts 1 and 7. Um, so, we're having a series of community meetings and it is in conjunction with our Cult to Art plan. And our Cult to Art plan has uh, six components. We've already completed several of them, including a film strategic plan, a plan for our Centro de Artes uh, gallery, which is in downtown Market Square. We're underway and making that happen. And if you haven't gone, it's free and you should go see uh, the exhibit of Alberto Mijangos' uh, life's work. He's a, very famous San Antonio artist. Um, and then the next thing that we did, we worked with our agencies to look at arts funding and some equity issues. Uh, and that's uh, ongoing and we'll be going to city council soon. And then we, uh, right now, we're talking about public art. And we'll be talking about music to come and uh, other things, uh, including potentially cultural districts. Um, and see what you guys think about that. So tonight, we want to focus on public art and uh, we're gonna get your opinions about public art. We're gonna tell you about the public art that you already uh, paid for as residents of San Antonio and what's already there. Uh, you're gonna get to vote on some things and, and Jimmy's gonna tell you how to do that with the use of cards. Uh, so you get to do some interactive things and we have all these different interactive uh, stations that you get to go to and learn and tell us what you want, where you want public art. So, um, I also want to introduce, if you don't already know, your Councilwoman for District 7, Anna Sandoval, and I want to thank her very much for coming out to this event. Uh, so, over here. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Debbie, for, for the introduction. I'm Anna Sandoval, I'm the, the Councilwoman for District 7. Uh, we're very close to it right now. We are in District 1. Um, just a few blocks up the way of District 7 where some of you live. I'm glad to see my, my neighbors out here. Um, so I'm not exactly an artist, but this is still very meaningful to me. Um, so I like, I like to paint. I, uh, I prefer oils to, to acrylics, and, but I keep those all very personal to myself. Nobody looks at them, nobody sees them. Um, they're in my own home. But I do appreciate public art. The most recent installment we've had in District 7 is the one by Woodlawn Lake, as far as, um, as I can remember. Um, but I, you know, a lot of what we do as, uh, as council people is we say, well, we want to improve quality of life for our residents. And what does that mean? And in many senses, that means infrastructure, right? You know, sidewalks and making sure the streets work. Um, but that alone doesn't create a neighborhood or a sense of place. There has to be character to that. And that's why um, it's fundamental to think about how we do that. And art is absolutely one way we can do that. And I'm so glad that my predecessors on the council decided to dedicate part of every, um, every bond package to public art. Um, but it wouldn't mean anything if you didn't have a voice in what that art looked like and where it went if it didn't reflect the community that it was in. So that's what's important about tonight's meeting, and I hope you, you enjoy it. And it, Debbie, it looks great. I love the, the interactive uh, setups. Yeah, thank you. All right, so go 
go ahead and enjoy. It sounds like this is uh, just a, about having fun tonight. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so we are going to go through there are some slides, and I'm going to try to keep a pace so that it doesn't slow things down too much. But I, I want to add some some information, and I also want to have some do some interaction with you while we're all seated. So I'll go through quickly and explain, you know, who is possible. So we're going to ask questions through this presentation more than we're going to be telling information. But who are we? Uh, I've been the manager for some time. I've worked on a number of projects, and I have a great, I've assembled a really great team. Um, my project managers are here tonight: Becky Johnson here to the side, Sarah Farwell just behind her, William Serrano Franklin right here. Sorry. Um, so they, they implement projects, they work not alone though, but they work with arts commissioners, those are appointed by um, the mayor and council, and we have a process and a lot of information that can be found on our website at creativesanantonio.com, public art. We're going to try not to make this an information heavy presentation, but there's a lot there on our website, and if there's something that you can't find, you can talk to one of us, and we will tell you, and we can also put more onto our website. So real quickly, there's going to be some segue slides that are kind of interactive tonight. And we're using these panels for lots of purposes. They may be used for cooling you down, but they also um, are a way to vote. So if you like, we're going to show some artwork if you like it. Like it, like we were in a, an auction house, you can hold up and we're going to take pictures and see what do you like, red? The, the red's happy and the blue's a little bit less happy. And, <laughs> There's also information to put on, you know, uh, public art is, we're collecting these at the end of the night. And the stamps at each station cover the different uh, dots, and that encourages you to finish each station so that we can give you a prize for completing everything on your way out. Two of the stations are outside, as you, as you um, may have seen already. So this is the first of the slides that have public art. These are award-winning public art works that were done through the Americans for the Arts uh, pan year review. And so this one, I'm going to ask if you like or don't like. This is a Janet Eckelman temporary installation in Beijing. Hold them up. We got some likes. We kind of get purple sometimes when it's a divided crowd. Another piece, this is All Power to All People by Hank Willis Thomas. This is a series of pieces done in Philadelphia through Monument Lab in reaction to trying to understand the, uh, the best way to handle some spaces that were previously installed with uh, Confederate uh, monuments. Likes and dislikes. Got some likes and dislikes. One more. I'll say right now. Books of a Feather, Dixie Friend Gray. This was done over in the, uh, Houston, in our city of Houston. She also has a piece in District 10 at the Senior Center. <coughs> Likes and dislikes. Okay, thank you. All right, next question, who makes it happen? That staff that works really hard on all of the projects works with a lot of people. Uh, the Arts Commission, 15 members. Uh, those members break down into a smaller committee uh, for a public art committee. These, these individuals work and meet more than once a, meet of, a month to try to help us with all of our work. Uh, we do an open call annually. We pull in artists from all over uh, at every level of, of experience. We also pull in uh, vendors and, and, and businesses that, such as art handlers, collaborative partners. The intent here is to represent the largest field we can so that we can get your qualifications on file. And when the project comes up where we need to work with you, we know who you are and we have a relationship. We, we pull artists who are in the local emerging category we do mentorship each year. I know Ryan is with us uh, back here, and he was on our mentorship program. And we have an exhibit about our mentorship program that's out in ArtCraft, um, which is really brilliant and has some interactive things that you brought the kids. I wanted to also say what we do through Debbie's introduction. We've been through a cultural planning process. We've, we've developed a vision statement, mission statement. And we're, you know, the most important one in terms of the vision statement opening up the landscape to diverse voices and narratives to create engaging public art. And what we want to do is try to think about how we can improve public art, and not just necessarily do more of it and get quantity going, but how do we reach more artists that maybe haven't had opportunities before? How do we elevate artists so that they can be made just like artists have been made in other cities? 
Um, and we do that using public dollars, and so there's a public uh, connectivity to every project we do through engagement like this too. And they get spread out through a number of ways through bond projects, which we find ways to connect to the street drainage and infrastructure projects, and sometimes through non-bond projects. That could also be grants, but it also um, ties into a lot of improvements that are done to facilities like the airport and convention center. This is some of what we've done just this year. So all of these projects represent, uh, through July, uh, completed projects that have been in the works for some time, but we made a concerted effort to try to have a lot of public artworks dedicated in 2018, and some of them are out in neighborhoods that you might be familiar with, some are downtown, some are on gateways that intersect between two neighborhoods or two districts. Uh, major facilities like the car rental facility, if you haven't gone out there, please see it. Great interactive um, kiosk is there that explains all about the mural. Um, and works such as out at Elmendorf Lake and Yanagwana Garden, and not very far from here in District 1 um, on Blanco Road near Nimitz Elementary. It's some great work we work with um, students. Okay, three more slides of voting. In Utah, this was just an award winner, Convergence by Dewey Bloomberg. Likes and dislikes. In Louisville, a metro project along the rail system, upriver, downriver by Mark Riegelman. And then in West Hollywood, as part of a cultural arts plan, a sidewalk display created with artists and infographics, uh, Dream Cloud by Sean Noyce. Great. So where does all this go? We place artwork throughout the city. A lot of that, of course, is going to be centralized around resources like the river and downtown. We know that. But we, you'd be surprised to see how much public art is really out into the neighborhoods and out into the, the extending neighborhoods. All of this is on an online map on GetCreativeSanAntonio.com. You can click on it and you can find a lot of details uh, about the project. And you'll see, uh, in, as you look at the 2017 bond, we have pooled dollars in each of these propositions that we are going through this process right now to figure out how to best divvy that up into the best possible projects. So all of our projects do get spent in, in a connection to the of that, one new, really centrally located project is the San Antonio T. And this is a project to try to connect all of the city's public art that we're doing with this bond program and also uh, bring it to downtown. And so we have a station here, so I'm not going to go into too much detail because we can talk to you about it through at the station. But the intent is to make this into a really signature arts anchor location, a public art anchor location right in the center of the city. When do things happen? Every project will have its own cycle, its own start and stop. But essentially, you're seeing us at the beginning of a cycle where we're having these community workshops that are going to lead to a series of projects that will then bring in artist selection and curatorial process. Every project will have designs developed, and those have opportunities for public presentation, a, ri a rigorous approval process to make sure we haven't missed anything or left anything out. And then we begin fabricating and building them to celebrate them. Okay. See Her. This is a mural done in Boston by artist <coughs> Sridhar Scan Lewis. Likes and dislikes. Edmonton Arts Council in Canada has a resonant progression by Royden Mills. Here's an example of maybe a little more of a prairie like setting. Rustician by Carl Unash in the city of Montevideo. Everybody likes tractor art. So lastly, why do we do it? Uh, we're, we're working with our art committees and with our cultural plants to, to establish some good criteria for what will make a good project. Uh, we want to connect these projects to what's existing and what are those existing resources. We want to advance equity in the way we place artwork and they should be transformative. They should meet our feasibility requirements. We don't want to start a project that's going to run into problems or that may overtax our program and, and impede our delivery. 
So that's something that will be part of our rigorous project selection process. And then as artworks and artists are selected, we're going to look through kind of curatorial criteria to understand that we really understand what these things mean, and we're not just giving these lip service. So the last of these three slides, I'm happy to say, is we've had some award-winning, nationally recognized projects. Artcraft, through the East Point Public Art Artist Residencies, which was funded with an NEA grant, just won a uh, Year in Review Award just the previous uh, few months ago. So I want to get your feedback, likes and dislikes. Year before, uh, Buster Simpson's project at Pearsall Park, Men and Mounds, also won an award. There are two of these sites on mounds that were former landfills. And this was a really uh, kind of difficult project to get the natural, this, this kind of protected area to allow for public art. But it's, it's amazing if you haven't gone out there. The views are incredible. I want the you know, likes and dislikes. They're kind of sold it a little hard. But. Then the, uh, the last of the year before, we also won an award for So Totally Wet. And this was out in the, the north side, uh, Panther Springs Park. And this artist, John Isherwood, uh, created these out of granite, and they're based on the forms of the seed pods of the plants that you would find along Panther Springs. Likes and dislikes. So, how do we get started? Tonight, that's kind of the process. We're going to be talking about artist selections and how we get the concepts going uh, in very short order. But first, we want to hear from you. There's a station about knowing the community, mapping arts and culture. In the back, we discuss with you art opportunities. In the center, San Antonio T. Outside, we get the art craft and reaction lab experience. So I'm around, and so is all the staff. Just take your questions one-on-one. -on -one. We'd rather have conversations with you. So that's all for us. We won't have any wrap-up. We have drinks and refreshments in the back. We'll get some music going and get you all started. Come up. If you have any questions, come up to any one of us, and, and we'll take your questions. Thank you. So what we're doing here, and it is part of what we're, we've been expressing, is that what we've heard is people want art. They want art in their communities. They, they want to participate. And so they're participating and providing input on some of the projects that, that they'd like to see. Some of the things that we're working on through the Department of Arts and Culture, they get to learn more about the entire city, the 500 square miles of San Antonio and how art exists in 500 square miles of the city. It permeates uh, the, the community. How we would like to, to, to see that coming in and out of neighborhoods, connect back to downtown, for example. We got a great project like the San Antonio Tree. We think it's, it's the only one of its kind in the entire world. And it'll send a great example of how we can rotate art into neighborhoods and, and allow artists to, to be seen uh, more closely to people's homes. And I, I think we, we've heard that loud and clear. We've heard uh, you know, that, that people really uh, know that there's a resource here of, of, of artists themselves that are, are just looking to, to, to have these kind of opportunities to, to work with neighborhoods, to work with communities, to work with a city, to, to get art expressed in our, in our community. And ultimately, it just, it, again, it just improves the quality of life. It, it allows us to, to, get, to understand our community more, to express the, the times that we're living in, and to celebrate the diversity, to celebrate what our values are. And I, I, I think it's, it's, it's something that art does really well.